What is up, guys? McDoubles back here with a brand new video. Today, we're going to be recreating the Priestess of the Moon, aka Tyranda Whisperwind from Warcraft 3, the original Warcraft 3 hero with specific criteria so we can get it as thematic as possible. We're going to take it all the way through the Burning Crusade to max level, and then we're going to jump into some dungeons and see how the build does. The idea is to make it both thematic but also viable. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's jump right in. <laughs> All right, guys, so I'm on a female night elf, and you know what? My name is Tyronda, so I'm just gonna take it. No one's thinking I'm a girl on this guy, okay? But we have to be a female night elf because we're recreating Tyranda Whisperwind, and you really can't do that on anything else uh, and actually give it justice, the justice that it deserves. I've got a pretty good idea for this one, guys. It's gonna take quite a bit of theory crafting, and I am actually gonna be doing this on Ascension's Area 52 custom class server where you pick all of your abilities from all of the different classes with all these different enchants right and you try to design something that works that's thematic and that's fun for you again in my case we're going to be going for the priestess of a loon from warcraft 3 so how am i going to be doing this well first of all it's very important to understand that in order to make this work we have to take the abilities that actual priestess of the moon had in warcraft 3 but on this character so what are those abilities well first of all we've got the true shot aura this is a very quintessential ability of the priestess of a moon of tyranda in warcraft 3 five percent more ap and we need to make sure we benefit from that this is a really difficult build because not only are we trying to go ap and archery based but we have to go into the druid tree and take the Starfall. This was the ultimate ability of the Priestess of Elune in Warcraft 3. One and a half minute cooldown. You summon a flurry of stars from the sky within 20 yards of the caster, dealing 102 to 117 arcane damage. It also causes 18 arcane damage to all other enemies within 5 yards of the enemy target. Maximum of 16 stars, last 8 seconds. That's a pretty big ability. One other quick thing I'll point out before we go anywhere else is that I can actually replicate the Searing Arrows effect that the Priestess of Elune had in Warcraft 3 with the Arrows of Fire enchant. This means I can get three out of her four abilities because the fourth one was an owl that you only used to scout with and I could do a variety of different things for that that don't require any kind of hard commitment. I could do Farsight, for example. Um, I don't know if Eye of Kilrog is what I should do, but theoretically, same concept, right? So I've got the three main ones. This says when you hit an enemy with a fire attack, you gain a stack of fire arrows. Fire arrows make your ranged critical hits apply a damage over time effect to your target, and this scales with my SP. What will the fire attack be though? Maybe explosive shot? I don't know. I don't want to go full fire, right? But it might just be the right way to go. Perhaps even over the arcane shot. So I started with the aspect of the hawk, hunter's mark, arcane shot, and auto shot. I'm going to get to leveling guys, and I'll see you a bit so one thing i do want to point out about the leveling experience is that i don't know when they made this change i somehow haven't really noticed it as much because the meta on the main realms just sticks you in a dungeon for the entire experience but look at this kobold it's level 13 it seems to be that these starter zones will just scale to your level and that's great for the faster xp rates because look at this this guy is not dying. He didn't take like any damage actually. So every fight is actually a little challenging. I actually did die already. I won't even lie. So, um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. You know, like if you are just making a character and you're trying to play the actual game, this is great. I really like this change. It actually might be one of the best changes Ascension has done in a while and something other private servers should probably look to do themselves. Check this out. They drop relevant loot. I just got this level 21 staff off a of kobold for some reason. The crypt bone staff. That's a weird one. All right. That's so sick. I really like this change a lot. 24 hours later. All right, guys, one whole day of grinding and some really ridiculous people and groups later that luckily you don't even have to see. I am now level 70. And guys, I have a pretty cool idea. This build actually ended up being um, a lot better than I thought it was going to be and still fulfilling all of the criteria. Once again, I want to remind you, the criteria for the Priestess of the Moon or Priestess of a Loon or Tyranda Whisperwind build, whatever you want to call it, right, is I have to use the following abilities. I've got to use the True Shot Aura. I have to use the Starfall. And I need to do something to mimic having fire on my arrows which is going to be adding extra damage and mimics the searing arrows ability now 
On top of that, I should have something to mimic the scouting owl. And some of you guys could say I should have a pet, but I think that that's a little too off. I think that's that's not right. The pet in Warcraft 3 was just a scout. It also flew in the air. It did not help me in basically any way. So I went with the far sight in order to mimic that. I just went ahead and took that because guess what? At the end of the day, we're playing for a theme, but we have to make the theme viable. So like I said, level 70, I had to come up with a build to make this work. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what I came up with. You'll notice it's actually a lot more meta than you probably would have expected, which is a great thing because it is going to end up working, I think. And uh, we're going to try to gear this guy out. I'm going to try to do some normals, then some heroics. And hopefully by the end of this, we can jump into what is awesomely known as the TBC Mythic Dungeons. This is supposed to be very hard. The TBC servers are something that not a lot of people have touched. And uh, I really am excited to have an actual fresh experience on Project Ascension for the first time in a bit by doing this. So if you want to skip me going over the build, just check the timestamps and you can skip to the gameplay. Okay, so first and foremost, guys, let me show you all of the abilities that I went ahead and took. Again, all I had to do was meet a certain criteria. At this point, I was just trying to make myself viable. We ended up with a pretty sick explosive shot build, but that's not all it is. So I have the arcane shot, the aspect of the hawk, auto shot, berserker stance, concussive shot, by the way, build will be in my discord in the uh, link in the description below. Conjure water, disengage, explosive trap, far sight for the owl, hunter's mark. I took lay on hands. The reason I took lay on hands is because I think it's thematic due to the fact that uh, I am a priest, right? I'm a priestess. And actually the Tyranda whisper win from heroes of the storm. If you guys ever played that before they destroyed it, uh, actually could heal, had one ability that could heal instant cast i believe lay on hands i think is a pretty cool one life tap that's just obviously for you know viability got to keep that mana up multi-shot poisons because you could put poisons on your bow and we are obviously going to be using a bow this entire time to replicate her and uh rapid fire i've also got the rock biter weapon for more damage steady shot aim shot arcane power for more damage black arrow explosive shot rampage if you can believe it for five percent range crit silencing shot just so we have something that fits the theme that interrupts and then we have the true shot aura now my friends take a look at these talents most of them are actually obviously i guess this would be easy to predict in the hunter tree but probably the most important one is going to be the hybrid talents so let me make sure i go over those careful aim increases my ranged ap by an amount equal to 100 percent of my intellect i am going to be going agi based as you can see and we're going to be going for regular you know hunter and enhancement shaman gear very similar to this girdle of the gale force or even these greaves of desolation you can see i have the intellect but I also have the AP or I have the intellect and I also have the agility and AP as well with this one. This belt's actually pretty sick. So yeah, that is what I'm going to be going for. So I could be double dipping into that intellect, which I'm already going to want to benefit from number one, because I want as much mana as I can get. So I don't go oom because that's, you know, a gameplay loop. That's not fun. But number two, I'm going to be going into other very interesting talents, such as mental quickness, giving me 20%, actually 40% of my melee attack power as bonus spell damage. You might be thinking, why would I want that? I'm not melee. Well, it doesn't actually matter. You know, luckily for me, if I'm playing a ranged character, I still have plenty of melee AP from my stuff. In fact, I'm only 70 less melee AP than I am ranged AP right now. So we convert that all to bonus damage, and you can see that's about half of what a raw caster would have with my gear level right now. That's a lot for somebody that's not a pure caster. The reason we have to go into bonus spell damage is because we can take Starfall and it can be useless, or we can actually play the theme where Starfall is actually good. That, my friends, is what I'm going for. So there's gonna be a really hardcore hybrid spell power theme with this build. But that's not all, because I also went into something that I highly doubt many people would be taking for a range build. I'm gonna be taking it because I wanna play around with that capstone bonus, and it's Mental Dexterity, the new Ascension version. This increases your melee AP by 60% of your intellect. So right off the bat, if I'm increasing my melee AP by my intellect, that's really strong because I'm double dipping and getting more SP. So that's pretty good. Also, capstone bonus. I gain 50% of my intellect as spell damage only works if my primary stat is agility, which obviously mine is. So I'm double dipping so hard that I was able to boost that bonus damage, as you guys saw, to 537 with this hybrid version of the build. Only 65 item level at level 70, which is horrendously low right now. Even missing a trinket using a level 15 trinket and uh, i'll get to the random enchants in a bit as well because i have actually theory crafted some pretty good stuff for that so other than the hybrid talents again i just
just went hardcore into anything that makes me a archer because that is it and i don't want to use a pet because that is not what a priestess of a loon does because i don't want to use a pet i went for lone wolf this is pretty cool it gives me a buff that increases my auto shot and hunter abilities by six percent if i don't have a pet on top of that one very important talent i want you guys to keep in mind is the exposed weakness my ranged ability critical so we will be critting a lot gives me increased attack power equal to 30 percent of my agility now what i'm going to be able to do is actually use a random enchant that will also allow me to once again double dip this effect into my spell power guys and so once again i think starfall is going to be sick and i think explosive shot is going to be absolutely absurd so yes we are an explo build because i think it very obviously nails the archetype of the searing arrow effect which was a toggle effect that added fire to your shots and it you know would hurt your opponent it for a lot but we're still going to be using the fire arrows enchant because in fact explosive shot on top of another enchant with the fire arrows is all going to come together to mimic that fire archer archetype now all of the other talents are just increases to damage and stuff like that uh other than maybe piercing shots this says whenever i aim shot steady shot chimera multi arcane shots my target bleeds for 30 percent of the damage dealt so there you go anything else of course you could check it out in the link in the description below go to my discord go to my builds i put all my builds there you can see the whole build you can copy it if you want the priestess of a loon my friend so let me show you guys my theory craft we're still not finished yet we've got to do some dungeons we've got to earn some gold and get everything we need but this is my theory craft to complete the build in terms of the random enchants first of all i'm going to be using the seething flames legendary enchant this is going to be super pivotal my damaging abilities which i believe by the way somehow actually includes just the auto shot has a chance to ignite enemies dealing fire damage to them and nearby allies so this is aoe it also scales with explosive shot we're going to be going hard into that now to double down on this i have kindle for the fire dealing non-periodic damage with i could just say it aim shot multi shot or steady shot will increase my fire damage up to 10 percent however the buff only lasts for five seconds so we've got to keep this up as consistently as we can now i kind of like the multi-shot for aoe but i might just go the very obvious route of focus burst which changes multi-shot from an aoe spell to a single target you know kind of bursty spell but if we don't go that route i've also been playing around with other enchants you might have already seen like deadly aim ranged auto shots have a 12 percent chance to reset the cooldown of aim shot and increase its damage by 30 percent now that is basically the only thing i'm actually actually playing with right now the one thing i have to get though that is 100 pivotal for the build is the arrows of fire which we've already talked about now some other very pivotal enchants secret of the far striders i do use arcane shot and explosive shot in the same build this increases the damage of arcane shot by 36 percent of my bonus spell damage and the periodic damage of explo by 7.5 percent of my bonus spell damage allowing my abilities to once again double dip into that sp i've also picked up versatile power which is what i alluded to with exposed weakness this gives me 66 percent as much spell damage as it gives attack power whenever i get the proc on exposed weakness which once again is just proccing from ranged ability crits 30 percent of my agi 30 percent of my agi at the current level is not great but as i get more gear it'll get better but even now it's 90 so it's 90 ap on proc proc so it's roughly let's say 60 sp on proc that's pretty good because it's permanent so that is the basics of this build right i am literally a priestess of a loon tyranda whisperwind herself recreated in warcraft 3 this is literally as accurate as you can get it so at this point it's just playing it out one thing i will say the starfall is better than you guys think i know what you're thinking right now are you not just a really strong explo build with the starfall well in some ways you should be happy if that's the case right because you can actually play a warcraft 3 hero and make it work and and that's good right i also want to try other warcraft 3 heroes like maybe the blade master etc so if you guys want to see more of that like we've done the mountain king in the past like the video and let me know in the comment section below now i do want to give you guys just one little hidden tidbit i do go into fire a little bit with this some people take things like critical mass i went ahead and took some other things um of course made my own build but i did decide 
decide to go with Ignite. I am critting critical strikes from Explo and essentially from my random enchant and possibly from Arrows of Fire as well will make my target burn for 40% of my spells damage. That's a lot of extra damage, especially on Cleave and AoE. I've also got 10% flat fire damage. I don't know if I want this, right? This is really going super hard into the Explo. I've got so many other spells I'm using, but with Kindle for the fire as well, the epic enchant we talked about, that is 20% more fire damage. That's so much on the CD flames and it'll be so much more when we get arrows of fire you know the reason i don't have arrows of fire is because on the area 52 realm for some reason the enchants are so much more expensive but by the way i am also using the striped frost saber this makes me as close to tyranda as i can get and i will be using this mount on this character all the time even though i have so many other mounts that I could possibly be using right now, as you can see from throughout the years, I'm going to be going with the one that lets me be as close to the Warcraft 3 hero archetype as I can possibly get. I do want to check the auction house real quick for Arrows of Fire. I guess there's a possibility there's a cheaper version in there, but last time I checked, there were like four for 200 gold and one for 70 gold. And I've been making gold, but I had to buy the other enchants you saw as well, and they're all also pretty expensive so we'll just have to see arrows of fire and uh really really so they've got arrows of frost there's literally not an arrows of fire on the auction house right now so you know what i'm not even lying like it actually is very difficult despite the fact that as you can see the area 52 server is popping and uh one of the reasons i want to do this as well is kind of a slight preparation for maybe mythic plus coming out in the next month or so and if i can get a guy geared up and at least some mythic gear at some point or get them ready to get into the mythics so I can farm that gear. That would be nice so that when Mythic Plus comes out, we can jump into that as well. But what I'm going to do now, guys, is start some gameplay. So I hope you guys enjoy the way the build works. And let's jump into some actual Priestess of Elune fun. All right, guys, this is my first level 70 dungeon, the Mechanar, in a long freaking time on TBC. On Ascension specifically, though, I've not done Mechanar on Ascension. I know there are some new mechanics in some of the dungeons, and I do not expect to dominate. I do want to put that out there. These people should be killing me. I don't have, you know, a whole lot of hit rating. I don't have all the stats I need right now, and I don't even have the experience to know what's good and what's bad. Honestly, considering I started that fight late, that's not too awful. Now, what I'm looking for is a massive pull, something I can starfall on and just really test that out. Here it is, Starfall. Check out this damage. Look at this. And it just keeps going. Everything's already dead. We can multi-shot, pull a little bit more on accident, shadow meld. That's fine. Multi-shot again. I'm not using the black arrow. I guess I should right now because this guy's going to take a while to die. But everything else was dying so fast. This is a boss? Dude, I would have never thought that was a boss. I think it was a mini boss or something. It's been so long since I've done Mechanar. Honestly, I'll take second place DPS, by the way. If you look, my Starfall was top five, actually. That's pretty good. All right, they're pulling huge again. I really wish I could lower the cooldown of Starfall and maybe give it an AP modifier as well. You know, there aren't a lot of cool ways to use it right now on Ascension. Believe it or not, there are still some abilities they haven't really touched too much yet in terms of diversifying them and making them unique, which is good because that means there's a lot of room to do different things. I'm just curious, like, what are these people using? I've got a Holy Nova build. Uh, this is actually the tank dominating in DPS, which makes sense. We did the Holy Tank as well at one point on the vanilla server. And another explosive shot build. This guy is just pure explosive shot. He's using the volley as well, which I did consider at one point. But we have Starfall, so it's, it's not necessarily redundant, but... It's kind of filling the same niche. Believe it or not, even though it's free pick, you can't pick whatever the hell you want. Everything has a cost and you can only get so many abilities. Well, I'll take some solace in knowing that the guy beating me has like actual burning crusade gear on like Machnathal beast mask. Other than the few pieces I showed you, which was like, what is it? It's just like my pants, my boots, my uh, belt. Everything else is actually, oh, and my shadow rend. Everything else is actually way below Burning Crusade. It's like the 50s and 40s, level 28 ring, 32 ring, stuff like that. So I don't think I'm that far off and I'll definitely take it. And you can see how the life tap is absolutely pivotal right now for getting that mana back up. It's not really a massive health cost either. Honestly, keeping up Kindle for the fire is really easy. Essentially, you just have to make sure that, you know, you explosive shot first, 
arcane shot right obviously if you can have the black arrow up you should have the black arrow up typically on these faster pulls i'm not doing it because things die too fast and it's just like a bloat on my mana on a boss or a slower pull every time and your priority is always to go for explo shot if you can and if you can't you go for arcane shot but if you can't do either of those or you have to keep kindle for the fire up you just uh aim shot and in my case then multi shot and then steady shot if you take the focus burst re that we went over though that makes multi shot you know single target i believe multi shots better than aim shot so do keep that in mind wait what the hell cash of the legion i think somebody just opened this as well and they got this piece of gear from it that we got to roll on and you can see it in the chat that that's not normal right believe it or not end game burning crusade is probably the one expansion i've played the least like i've played newer versions of the game legion shadowlands even bfa more than i've played burning crusade um because i played the hell out of burning crusade but i was a kid when i started it and so i got to max level but i only you know scratched the surface there wasn't a lot of reason for me to do much else did everybody just get left oh no okay just bugged so when i see something like the mechan arm like damn this is kind of past my time and that's awesome because it feels fresh I wonder if any of you guys feel like that too about Burning Crusade. By the way, that's another Starfall going on right now. Look at the freaking AoE, man. You can barely really appreciate it because things die so fast as a direct result of it. I'm, by the way, in first place with 5k DPS if we round. 5k. I know you guys say you round too much. G give me a break, okay? <laughs> G give me a break. You would round up too, man. That's what I was taught. If it's below, if it's above a 0.5 you can round up if it's like 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 once it gets 0 0.8 0 0.9 then you really have the ability to round up and not feel bad about it and then uh, why am i explaining math to you guys and rounding things you know all right nethermancer sepethria i don't even know this boss that's how little knowledge i have that's one of the reasons i'm so excited to get into the bc servers man Believe it or not, this is just a normal, by the way. Who knows what DPS looks like on Heroic or Mythic? We are very, very much relying on getting something good. It's 12.30 a.m. I have done dungeons, plenty of them, without recording them. And as you guys see and what I've gone over, I'm still using a level 50 foreman's head protector. So I've got to get better stuff because I can't even queue for Heroics until I believe item level 70. The one thing I've got to get used to is actually popping all my cooldowns properly. Oh my god. I didn't even realize I was standing in that thing's fire. I'm the worst PvEer in the world, dude. All right, I actually came in first place DPS 2.1k and a one-handed axe drop. The thing about this one-handed axe is that it's perfect for me. It's Agi Stam AP. I am going for... Uh, oh god, somebody else wants it too. Please, me. Damn it! I never win, dude. I never win, man. It's not even funny. All right, Starfall, hello? that off my screen can we go for the multi-shot now please see a lot of people like focus burst and I, I know like when i say a lot of people i guess i shouldn't say that because what i mean is min maxers love it for the ranger builds and i get that you know i can respect that kind of grind i guess but uh if i'm honest with you there's something to me about the numbers there's something to me about the aoe i prefer the regular multi-shot is that dumb I hope not, you know, because to me, it's just more fun. You have a bunch of stuff, you know, being pulled. You starfall, you explode, you multi-shot. It's proccing the Kindle for the fire. And it, see, it hits, it hits everything, dude. My multi-shot is top three, by the way. You know, it's not like I just want it and it's not performing. It performs. By the way, I'm tiny right now. Now, every single time this little weak aura pops up on my screen that I'm showing you guys right now, that essentially means my Kindle for fire buff is up. And the reason I did that is just so I could not have to look at the top right of my screen the entire time. Does that make sense? I just wanted to know. See, I like to multi-shot first, then explode to start that Kindle for the fire. We can go for the aim shot. I really like that because it's proccing the Kindle without having to cast on the steady. But uh, eventually you are going to have to go for that steady shot to keep it up, right? And so I should probably black arrow here. It's something I forget. As I said, it's just hard, right? Because I don't want to use it on every pull. It's just, it's hard to commit it to muscle memory sometimes for me. You could say maybe you should use it on every pull anyway. Maybe you're right. You know, maybe I should. Maybe I will actually. Let's just do that. Let's just start using it even if it feels like it's wasting mana. Because I can just life tap. And unlike a lot of classes that might be using it, I'm not really punishing my healer at all by doing this. And I'm also in first place DPS the entire time. Like, this is so consistent. I'm not losing to the other guy anymore. I think I'm getting my groove going. I don't have the rapid fire, unfortunately, for Path Alley on the calculator, which is such a cool name, by the way. It's so cool. But I do have the arcane power. So we're going to start with the arcane power. 
15% more damage on all of my abilities, which is going to be ridiculous because we're 100% ability based right now. Auto shots all the way at the bottom. Like all of my damage is coming from abilities. Look at that top two star fall in the last pull. That's just awesome. All right, there we go. Wait, that's how I just started with the... Uh... See, I started with the explosive shot, but I am 100% tempted to go with a physical ability just for the Kindle. You know what I mean? Just for that buff to fire damage. Okay, Helm of the Righteous. That's a... Wow, man, my intellect tank. Uh, not the not the demon one, but the Pally and the Stormhammer one. God, that would be a cool one if I was trying to go like raw intellect tank. Uh, but Abacus of Violent... Oh my God, that's good. I don't even have a trinket. Dude, two people need this. Come on, this is me, right? Yes! Oh my God, it makes up for everything I've lost because the trinket is such a hard one to get. Item level, dude, 115. Yeah, I'll glad, oh, somebody left. Can we keep queuing? The tank left. Honestly, the DPS was good for this. I don't know why he left. Maybe he just didn't want to do another. Oh, wow, instant queue with the healer. God bless Durissimo, or universe bless, whatever the hell you are in real life, it doesn't really matter. Point is, I got an abacus of violent odds, 64 AP just for using it, and 260 haste, which we can uh, put with the rapid fire. It's gonna be stupid, guys, in a good way. All right, here we are, Shadow Labyrinth. Let's do it. These are fast. I'm gonna make my macro for the rapid fire, cast rapid fire, shift click the item, put it in place of rapid fire, bada bing, bada boom. Okay, we're ready to go. By the way, 72 item level off that. Does that mean I can queue heroics, or was I wrong? normals oh i think i can so we'll think about that after this one shadow labyrinth this is one i do remember doing I, whenever i played a tbc server or something like that look at the starfall it's going hard and that dude has volley should i use volley anyway the thing i didn't like about it was the cast time it actually felt like it might just be more dps to spam explo you know that's a perk by the way starfall is just use it and you're done you know and you have to say like that's a big deal over anything with the cast time by the way let's just black arrow there you can see the thing's gonna die so it's like why did i black arrow but i think we get it i'm in first place dps still i can explode that pack right there into the multi-shot for the kindle into the explo again into the explo once again and finish him off with a multi-shot interrupt that dude just oh did i missed the interrupt all right i'll take it I i'm loving this I am loving this, guys. And you know what? I was one of those kids. Like, when I played World of Warcraft in my teen years, we all had our groups, right? And everything influences who you are, and then you become an adult, and you can actually think on it, and then you can become who you are actually supposed to be. I think that makes sense to most people. But when I was a kid, under a lot of influence, when I was playing this with pals, if you played a girl character in my friend group, you were weird. I don't want to use expletives, but yeah, like, you were weird, to put it very soft. Now I understand why people did it. I never bought the excuse of you wanted to look at something pretty, mostly because let's be real, it's it's still pixels at the end of the day. However, I have in the, in the Wrath days specifically, I remember people using this excuse. They said, I play female humans and night elves only because the animations are better. And I thought, okay, great excuse, dude. Okay, no, they were right. Uh, it is actually very, very weird. Something about playing on the female night elf so far has just felt better has just somehow felt fundamentally better than when I play any of my male characters, any of my male tunes. And I really thought it was bull. I thought they were just making up an excuse, but they weren't. Like, it actually is better. So for those of you out there that just want something that feels different on World of Warcraft, and uh, you don't feel like it's an attack on your manhood, you know, let's say you're an adult at this point, right? Just, dude, make a night elf female or a human, maybe, is what I've heard. I haven't done it. And uh, apparently, it is just better. It just feels better. You know, it feels really good. I also feel less like an idiot. Does that make sense? Like, when I play a male human or male Tauren or male Draenei, I feel like an idiot. Like, I feel like people look at me and they think, yeah, that guy's 13. You know what I mean? Um... Nobody thinks Tyronda is 13. You know what I mean? Everyone's probably thinking I'm a neckbeard, but that's beside the point. One thing I love about these ranger builds, especially when they don't have a pet, is uh, number one, not having a pet means not having to use your brain as much, which uh, for a lot of people, especially me, is just more fun when you're just grinding. Grinds are so bad and you have to really pay attention. I can take a grind if it's like truly you know, and on your second monitor type of thing. This could totally be that if I wasn't, you know, recording and talking right now. So do keep that in mind. The no pet thing, just spamming your stuff. You know, once you get that basic rotation in your head, you can't really mess it up. Explo arcane shot, then physical. Um, and if it's AOE, pop the starfall. If it's single target and it's a big deal, pop the black arrow. If you've got that in your head, you can't fail with this build, man. You really can't, it plays itself. All right, every cooldown popped. Starfall for the boss. I have the black arrow up, by the way. Here's the aim shot. There's, uh-oh. 
I do have a trinket, even though I'm probably not supposed to right now. So I use that. All right, explode again. Explode. I don't know what the rule is when the lock and load procs, which procs off the black arrow and gives me a no cooldown explo. Like, is the rule that I just keep casting explo, or does it ruin it because it is a, a dot? I don't know. Oh, by the way, I have first place once again by a, a pretty wide margin. A platinum shield of the Valor is one of the best parts about TBC is the gear design, by the way. And I don't know how Ascension has changed it, but they did such a good job on the vanilla gear design so far that I can imagine anything that... The, dude, a guy actually could win it. What a lucky day for this guy. Imagine needing this and also winning it. It's such a good feeling. But I can only imagine anything they've done so far on TBC to make the game better has been like an awesome change. I actually have no idea. To this day, Ascension still relies on their Discord change log to show us patch notes. Like so many little changes just get put on a random change log. They get lost in the Discord and you never know what's happening. So I'm not going to surf through their Discord change log to know what's going on. So until they put out like a website post with a big patch, I never know what's changed. I really wish they would do something different there. You know, I wish it was more in your face when things changed. Just something to think about, I guess. I know the Ascension devs watch, so maybe one of them made it this far in the video and they're like, yeah, actually, it does make sense to make these types of changes a little bit more noticeable to the player base. If somebody that has played it more than almost anyone else doesn't even want to look at it, why would a normal dude want to? Guys, can you can you just tell me this doesn't look fun in the comments? Because I won't believe you. I won't believe you. You know, you can say I hate archers, I hate night elves, and I hate the priests of a loon. But when you get that many numbers on your screen, you're having fun. Period. There is no other way. You can't argue that with me. You'd be wrong. You know, when you have that many numbers on your screen, you are having fun. By the way, way easier than what I do remember from original TBC, uh, because I remember dying at this boss. I remember literally not being able to complete this dungeon one time on a warlock I made on some like, it was like Project, was it Entropius? I don't remember what it was called, but it was like an old school TBC server from like six months ago, you know, and I wiped on this boss and I was, no, it's even longer than that. It can't be that server, but I think you guys know what I mean. I couldn't believe it. You know, every pull took 10 years, but do keep in mind once again, it's just normal mode. All right. No rapid fire. Kind of want to lower that cooldown considering, you know, what's been going on with that. But uh, do have the star fall up and the arcane power super consistently. I am using every enchant I showed you that I owned right now, including three copies of things like versatile power and secret of the far striders. So this is pretty accurate. 803 bonus damage, by the way, with that proc right there. Did you see that? Do you see that? Oh my God. With the exposed weakness. That's a billion times more that's like 250 way more than i thought oh god i'm like oh no i stood in the purple fire guys i just realized if it's also increasing my ap i'm double dipping once again that's what i did not think about when i first went over this with you it's even better than i thought ornate leggings of the venerated god if only that was agi but honestly my greaves of desolation are great so i can't complain basically where i want to be right now with these greaves so guys i just thought of the perfect enchant to make a, a build like this just better right so if you had an epic enchant that made starfall do spell flame damage which is arcane and fire you could call it sunfall you know like if you really had to that would be so absurdly good with this build give it an ap modifier reduce the sp modifier and maybe reduce the cooldown by 30 seconds then you have something crazy cool maybe that's legendary status i don't know i again i only have ideas based on fun so who knows how the balance of that would look like but uh guys my massive dps on this boss single target star fall up and everything 2400 at the end of that one and a blackout Trudgeon. I don't quite need something like that because it has a chance on hit that I'm never going to get. Here he is, Murmur himself. God, it's been a while. It has been a while since I've been here, boys. Now, one thing I could do, by the way, as well as Explosive Trap, as you can see right there. Um, there's actually an enchant that increases the damage of Starfall on anybody currently suffering damage from Explosive Trap. So they have genuinely thought about this to some varying degree, it seems. They keep charming me. All right, we just barely lived. Oh yeah, one thing I also got is Conjure Water. Probably one of the best parts about the uh, free pick realm is how self-sufficient you can make yourself. But I've been looking at my abilities. And I'm like, okay, McDoubles, man. Like you've got all these DPS abilities, but you would get slaughtered in PVP. It's perhaps not as in balance as we remember from like one year ago. You could also just get lock picking and open all the Corium lock pot. Can I do that? I mean, just make sure I can do it. By the way, I don't even have a poison on right now. So my single target would go up a little bit if I had it. I have to buy that real quick. Where's pick lock, dude? Subtlety? Okay. I have the points. Might as well try. Does it max it out? It does. Oh God. Thank you, Ascension for just, oh man. Don't you just love it? Where, where are you, pick lock? It's going to be in the rogue skill tree. There we go. All right. 
I can just open all my own Corium lockboxes. No problem. Let's see what we get. Dude, and everybody passes. Dude, these guys are... I'm not going to call them a name, but you're not thinking, bros. You aren't thinking because now I'm going to get all of the loot. And I don't even have to look like I'm doing it. I'm just greeting them. All right, so I get a free two gold off that. And I get a free four gold. No, okay, three and a half. Three gold. And uh, so five gold, five and a half gold. Guys, that's five and a half gold those guys don't get. I'll take it. One talent I was using was Thrill of the Hunt. 100% chance to get 40% of the mana cost if any non-periodic damage dealing hunter shot back to me when it crits. It also refunds the cooldown of Arcane or Explosive Shot by uh, one second, it seems, and Multi-Shot and Aim Shot as well by two seconds whenever they crit. But considering the fact that I'm consistently life tapping, I almost wonder what you know the true efficacy of a talent like this really is and maybe if I should take it out and use the three points in something else, maybe even something that's just straight up more damage, like 6% fire crit. We'll have to figure it out as time goes on. So far though, based on numbers and, you know, damage DPS charts alone, I have no gripes with the build and somehow I think we actually got it right. First try. First try, boys. All right, Murmur, let's see what you can do. Explosive shot, black arrows up as well. Everything is good and ready to go. What the hell? Really? Dude, okay, the normal modes are so easy, it's unreal. Sonic Spear, damn. Do I just take the Sonic Spear? I didn't win the other 1H, I don't have to feel bad about it. You do get double the AP on a two-handed weapon for Rockbiter, so that's kind of perfect. It has freaking 24 hit rating. Two people want it, but I'm gonna win it, bam. I hate this game. Okay, we're moving on. Yo, huge. I'm in a heroic black morass. I was going to end the video, but I had to show you guys. I won a bow. Melmorta's Twilight Longbow, guys. It's so good being an archer. It's not like being a caster because there's rarely ever another archer in your party. You know what I mean? So you get the loot. It's kind of like being a tank. This is really sick, guys, because it's 112 item level, which is a great first step towards getting into mythics. Guys, I just found out basically the way it works on this TB server is that you can just queue for heroics as soon as you get the item level which i do believe is 70 now you need 108 item level to do a mythic but then you actually do have to get the key for the dungeon to do the mythic version of that dungeon as well so we have to do some rep grinding guys as a result of that i'm gonna leave it up to a part two if you guys want to see you know explo shot priestess of the moon tbc part two like the video to let me know. But I'm going to go ahead and end the video right there, guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and a subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one, though. McDoubles out.